met Lamford half my life ago. I was 21 years old, and I and I hadn't. Uh, I was still. I was taking the van in from Hoboken every day. Uh, I hadn't gone. I didn't go to college, and I and I and I, I didn't know how to uh, start my life in the theater. And it's all I wanted. And I wanted to find a home. And uh, and I had seen Burn This. Uh, here in New York, and um, and so I, I started hanging around the Circle Rep and at the lab, and I made friends with people who were in the lab, and I consequently got an audition to uh, to audition for the lab, and that's where I met Lanford. He was one of the four judges there, along with Tanya Barris and Mylon Stitt and Chris Reeve, and I and I did a scene from uh, Danny in the Deep Blue Sea, and and when it was when I was done, Lanford came right up to me and he said. Uh, we should go out to lunch. You have a whole bunch of stuff in there in this butch body. And I've got to take you out. <laughs> I always said that to a lot of people. But a lot of those people I was big fans of. I was a big fan of Lamford's and I had no problem with it. And it was the beginning of, uh, of, of my complete education in the theater. I, I, I didn't know anything until I met Lamford. Um, I'd never sat in an orchestra seat until I met Lamford. And um, the first time I did that, we went and saw Redwood Curtain, and and, uh, and I didn't know at the time it was like his 60th time seeing it, and, uh, and he cried it the entire time, and uh, and then we went and saw Angels in America three times, and every time we would go out afterwards and we would drink and and we went to Joe Allen's for the first time in my life, and we'd go there and we would go there all the time because he had a tab there, and it was really cool. And, um, <laughs> and the first time I ever went to a museum was with Lanford. And the first time I ever went to a garden tour was with Lanford. And uh, I, things I just never dreamed I would ever do. And Lanford used to get a kick out of me, he said, because I was so crude. And, and I'd say, well, I don't know, man. I don't have all your big words. And he'd say, no, 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 don't change it. Just, just I love it. I love it. So he'd like... He taught me this thing about being able to hate and love something at the exact same time and that contradiction being the most human aspect that we have and how, how being those things put us on action, which I never knew anything about before. I didn't know why I wanted to be an actor and it was this desperate need to want to connect. And I learned that from Lanford and, um, and, he, and he just touched me so very much and I just want to say that he, you know, years later, one thing Lanford told me was don't ever, ever, ever ask a playwright to ever write you a part. And to this day, I would never do that. And and then years later, um, I was in a production of The Normal Heart. Actually, I wasn't going to be in it because it was only a week run. And I said to Lamford, it's like a week only. And he said, you have to do it. It's a great play. Come. I don't care if it's only six performances. I'll come to every show and I'll give you notes. <laughs> so I did. So I did. It was out to La Mama and I did it. And... Uh, and he came every night, and every night was tiny, and every night I could hear him in the audience. If you knew Lanford and you went to the theater with him, like when he didn't like something, you'd hear it, and he'd be really loud. And he'd go like, oh. <laughs> and he did that for six performances. And, <laughs> and he gave me notes. And on the last night, I met the mother of my 16-year-old son now. And, uh, and, and I had this amazing night. I, I can't even tell him this, but I'm going to tell it. I had this amazing night with her. And then um, she didn't call me for like forever. For she just didn't call me back. So it was like three weeks. I was going crazy. And I said to Lanford, I was like, I, "That's never happened to me before." But I'm going crazy, and I'm in love. I think I'm in love with this person. Said, You're not in love. Just come out to Sag Harbor for the summer, and you'll forget about it. <laughs> so I did. And I went out to Sag Harbor, and I worked with Michael Baird, who's a great friend of his, is a landscaper, and I landscaped all summer. And it was the hardest work I'd ever done. It was so hard. And I, and I lived up in the attic and 5 o'clock every morning. And then I'd come home at night at 5 o'clock. And Lanford would have a big dinner and martinis and music in the garden. And we'd talk about theater. And, you know, Lanford was also an amazing actor. He could remember, he remembered every single line of his plays. And he would do Chatty Farrell. And he would do Tanya. And he would do the, the Jeff Daniels. All these people that are here, I've heard Lanford do them. Amazing. <laughs> And weep while he was doing it. It was the most amazing summer. And so about a month into the summer, I said, uh, I said, Lamford, I said, I, I can't stop thinking about her. And he said, you know what, just call her and just tell her off on the machine. So I said, okay. Because I did anything you told me to do. So I went out and, and I called her and she picked up. It had been like over a month. 
And she, before I could say anything, she said, I just want to apologize. And she gave me a good enough reason at the time. And she said, I'm in East Hampton. Come and see me. And I went back in the house, and John Thurkill was there, and he's the one who pushed me, actually, because Lanford said, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> and Jonathan said, no, man, do it. And, uh, and I got in this big, huge dump truck that I had been driving, and I went over to her house in East Hampton, and I wasn't allowed. She was like, wait for me outside. Bad sign, right? <laughs> and she came out in the middle of the night. Oh, and before I left, I said to Lanford, Lanford, can I bring her, can I, can, can I come back? And he went, absolutely not, not in the house. <laughs> he said, that's why I have this big garden. So we came back. So we came back, and I will tell you 100%. I am absolutely positive that Jake was conceived in that garden, and I would tell Lanford that all the time, and he would, and he, would, he hated it, and he loved it at the same time. And a, and a few days be, uh, before Lanford passed, Tanya and I went out. I went out with Tanya to New Jersey, and and he was awake, and he couldn't speak, and I showed him a picture of Jake, and he was, I think, very happy to see me, and. And I could see it in his eyes, he was very bright, and I showed him a picture of Jake, and he teared up a little, and I said, Lanford, I said, there he is, he was conceived in your garden, it's Jake from the garden. And he very dramatically rolled his eyes, and only the right Lanford could. And, uh, and, I, and, 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 and that made me very happy. And so the last thing I just want to say is, you know, I never asked Lanford ever to write anything, and I was lucky enough to, find, to be in a play of Lanford's. Uh, two years after that summer, I was in a play that Marshall directed at Bay Street called Virgil Was Still the Frog Boy, and in it were innumerable lines from conversations that we'd had two years earlier. It was amazing, and it all took place in Sag Harbor. And there was a line in there when I, I read it at his house, and they had a line in there where I say, what's an aspic? Uh, you know what an aspic is? Because I know there's still people that don't know what an aspic is. And I definitely didn't know what an aspic was, but it says it's a food thing, a jelly thing. <laughs> and I said to him, Anthony, what is an aspic? And he died laughing. He said, and he said, okay, I've never written a, a cheap laugh in my life, but I'm going to keep that. <laughs> and, and so years later when it was published, I was very proud to see that it was spelled out as slash pick. <laughs> what I loved even more and what I really appreciated even more was um, something else that was added and it was just a stage direction. It says Chuck enters. He's a strong, good looking local carpenter. Easy going was invented to describe him. So was Butch. <laughs> I miss him and I love him so much. Thank you.